gentlemen it is episode number 26 this week i am recording this one on it's actually the 21st of december I'm getting in early so i can set it and forget it um i've decided i'm going to take at least two weeks off from recording the old podcast um so it'll be nice i'll plan some things hopefully hopefully some cool things will happen to me and then i'll um you'll have plenty to talk about with you boys you guys you boys you guys when i get back um yeah happy days mate happy days i uh gave myself fresh trim today have a look at that look at that obviously you can't see if you are um listening but it's pretty fresh so just think of the freshest haircut you can think of and then imagine that on my head that's what it is all right so because I'm recording this so soon after my other one. Firstly, with last week's episode, I recorded the whole thing with my GoPro. Recorded the whole thing. And then partway through, it decided to shit itself. I don't know what happened. It like overheated or something. Um, I'm also wearing my fresh as Deck the Halls with Dragon Balls um, Christmas themed t-shirt. It's, it's amazing. Um, yeah, halfway through, it decided, not even halfway through, 13 minutes in, it decided to be like, nah, I'm not going not gonna to record anything else. So, what a, a little bit of a spew, but it, probably a blessing in disguise. Because clipping it up is, it's not really, it's not that hard, but it's just a bit of a pain in the ass. Like, I spend a bit of time clipping the podcast and then uploading it to the, temp, the Canva so I can put it into the templates and it takes a bit of, bit of fucking around. So, you know, probably a blessing in disguise that I didn't have to do that this week um, because I didn't have the much didn't have much video to do it with. So I, I'm still going to upload it to YouTube just to keep the flow going. But hopefully this one actually records in its entirety. Um, so, yeah, what did I do since I last recorded, eh? I... So on Saturday, I'm sure most of you are aware, in Melbourne it was like 36 degrees, 35 degrees, and I fucking died. It was the first ride in ages, firstly, where I didn't have to wear um, a stupid amount of like cold weather stuff. So I didn't have to wear gloves, didn't have to wear a couple of layers of things to start. It was like, it was hot enough in the morning to just go with a jersey and my bib shorts that was it usually i've got to wear a few layers and then strip down as the right like as the morning progresses because it'll warm up but you know it was it was hot to start like i didn't need to wear anything else other than my you know the standard kit and then you know the ride was ride was all right didn't like it was hot but it i don't know it didn't phase me too much out there it um i was on top of my fueling i was a good boy i did everything i needed to do i drank plenty of fluids um probably not as much as i should have as i learned later on but i drank plenty um much better than the week before i was on top of shit you know and you know i thought i was doing pretty good i thought i was killing it then i you know got home switched out put my running shoes on and went out and hit the run and like first 4k's i was like i am killing this shit like it was hot but I was like, I'm killing this. And then it got to like probably 8Ks. I had 13Ks to do. It got to 8Ks. And I was, you know, that's when it kind of hit me. That's when the reality sunk, set in. Um, and I was like, this is hard. I think I'm going to, like, I think I'm going to fucking struggle. And then it slowly, 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 it just got hotter and hotter. And I just felt it like I was, I was losing out. And then I got back to the car. Like, thankfully, Caitlin, Caitlin came and picked me up and rescued me. Um, got back to her car and I was like, I'm f- fucked. I was going to have an ice bath when I got back, but I was just, I was done, man. I came home, had a shower and just lay down for a bit because I needed to like collect my thoughts. Um, it was, yeah, it wasn't good, but it was good because it was like, it taught, it showed me where I, where I needed to be with my heat acclimation. Um, I would have thought it would have been better because I've been doing heaps of saunas, but you know, the only way to really get better at it is to just do more in the heat. So, uh, gonna have to do plenty of that over these next couple of months before Geelong. 
because Geelong is always, every year I've done it, it's always warm. Like it's always a good day. So I'm probably jinxing it now, but it's always a hot day. Like you finish the, by the time you finish the run, you're hot as, and you're you're gonna fuck, you feel like you're gonna black out. I felt exactly how I felt on the weekend. Um, so yeah, almost fucking died on Saturday, and Saturday morning I thought I got spat on by a truck driver, which is kind of disgusting. If it did actually happen, I was you know riding along, and then all of a sudden I got like this wetness, like this wet kind of sprayed over my hands and my legs and I was like what the fuck was that and and it was as a truck drove past on the other lane and I thought nah there's no way that my fuck it's bad on me like that's disgusting spitting on someone is like the worst thing you can do like I feel like it is definitely the worst thing you can do there are so many things that you can do to other people that aren't as bad as spitting on someone I'm just putting this bit of paper under the microphone because it's like it's moving around heaps um yeah i feel like spitting on someone is literally the worst thing you can do to someone it's like the ultimate disrespect and degrading you know fucking piece of shit move you can do if you spit on someone so hopefully he didn't spit on me but like as soon as i thought he spat on me i was filled with so much rage um so i had to let that go pretty quick i was like he didn't it was just the fucking you know windscreen wipers as Caitlin said she was like he was probably just trying to wash his window he didn't spit on you I was like yeah you're right just getting mad for no reason um what do I what do I listen to this week so going this is this is flowing on well from last week's episode I actually listened to an episode with oh, I know his name off the top of my head I gotta remember it Jimmy Corsetti I didn't know it off the top of my head with Joe Rogan episode 1742 uh like it does his own YouTube channel and stuff, but it was they were talking about like the pyramids and um, you know the, the phenomenon around that kind of stuff, how ancient civilizations build used to build things, um, and there was like one of the a theory they were talking about quite um, throughout the majority of the episode was basically that like these guys built these fucking giant pyramids with blocks, like they moved blocks hundreds of miles that weighed like 100 tons 70 to 100 tons which is wild and they were cutting through like how the fuck did they used to cut these granite blocks out of you know out of mountains with the tools that we expect them to have back then it's insane like they were doing tests on the like what were they doing they were they analyzed right they used to drill holes these guys the ancient the ancients they used to drill holes and they analyzed the like the revolutions of the drill bit and you know it moved at a certain pace and then they tested it against our modern diamond tip drill bits and their uh, their ancient techniques were like 14 times faster than our modern you know modern technology and it was like it was just baffling all the shit they came up with was baffling and it turned out that there was an event like there's evidence that leads or evidence that points to the fact there was like a cataclysmic event you know might have been four thousand five thousand years ago i think roughly that like wiped out a lot of the population of the people on the planet and they reckon that's what wiped out these the like the people or the civilization that built the pyramids and did stuff like that because it was if you look at it they're pretty technologically advanced the techniques they used and the way they built things in comparison to what we, we think that they they're capable of back then like that's a long time ago and they were building shit like that they were probably better than we are they were probably more advanced than we are today well they obviously were in the fact that they could drill better than we can with the shit that they they had back then or we assume they had back then and anyway there was evidence proving or showing that there's been a cataclysmic event that potentially wiped those guys out and obviously along with it took their techniques and it just got me thinking i was like fuck man it'd be so cool to go back and just witness those times and see like what it what it's about and another cool thing was that um they were saying that there's no real evidence that says that the pyramids were tombs for pharaohs. There's no real evidence. Like, there were never any, you know, um, 
mummies found in there. There was just like, there's no real solid evidence that says that the pyramids are tombs. There's no, none of the none of the drawings or the the, the script like the the writing on the fucking wall is uh, points to it being a tomb. Nothing. There's no real solid evidence that says they're tombs. It's just you know, I think. He described it as, I think it was like the British when they invaded, they started saying that they were tombs for the pharaohs because that makes sense, which is weird that we, you know, just went with that. Um, there was, there's a guy out there that has a theory that because the Nile River used to, you know, run through the steps of the, the pyramid, pyramids of Giza, that they were actually used to generate power and the water used to flow through the pyramid and it would be a way to separate um, the hydrogen and generate power or energy so i don't know it's just crazy man like we we have no fucking idea what went on back then and if you're into that kind of shit let's give it a listen it's worth it he's on um on youtube bright insight i haven't watched any of his videos but i'm gonna because i love i love this kind of stuff it's just cool to think you know how far or how far ahead we were back then so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna be checking that shit out and i advise you if you're into this kind of stuff give it a listen because it's just cool like it's cool to think about I could get lost in it and talk about it for hours. Um, I love that kind of shit. Love it. Like I said, I've, I think I've mentioned it before. I hope when you die, you get given, you know, you get to see this kind of stuff. You get to see how it was all done, what happened, you know, all that kind of shit. They're also talking about in Chile, there's like this uh, underground. I'm going to see if I can Google it. So if you guys are sitting there doing nothing, you can Google it along with me and find out exactly what I'm talking about. So, un- underground, I think it was in Chile. Underground village in Chile. Chile, I'm not looking at Chile noodles, mate. It was, oh, I think it was in Chile. I suppose not. Underground village in... Maybe it was Peru. Ah, shit, not Perry. Bum 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 bada bada bum bada bum bum. Ancient underground cities. Here we go. This is on. This is something you can Google. Yes, Google ancient underground cities. It's in Turkey. That's where it is. And there's like several of them. They're crazy, man. Like they used to have full, like enough for a full town underground, including animals. Then they used to have underground rivers as well. Everything. And like on top, they'd still have houses, but underneath that have like a full town underground. And it was, they would, how how do I describe this? The point that um, Jimmy made on the podcast was that, like, you can't just come up with this, you can't just build this thing, you know, when you're getting invaded or when something bad happens, you have to have this prepared. And he said that there might have been, you know, maybe they knew that there was this cataclysmic event coming and that they this is their way of preparing for it so they could, you know, keep themselves alive underground. Um, but yeah, Google it. Have a look at these underground, ancient underground cities. It's insane. And they reckon there's similar in Egypt as well. Because there's like pathways that they've that the Egyptians have sealed off, not allowing foreigners, scientists or anything to go down there. But like the theory is because they don't want them to discover these fucking underground, underground, what do you call them? Paths, tunnels, all that kind of shit. But anyway, it's just fucking bonkers, man. It just, you know, blows my mind every time I think about it, which is, yeah, it's pretty cool, actually. Anyway, moving on to the next topic. Um, so I was having a sauna this morning. I've had a, an easy run this morning and then um, a swim, which I decided to do. I was supposed to do, to do them separately, but I was like, yeah, if I gotta knock them out, knock them both out at once so that I can be done for the day. So that's exactly what I did. Um, anyway, yeah, had a was having a sauna this, this Arvo, no, this morning, losing the plot, mate. And I was thinking, who invented saunas? Like, who invented them? Who was the first person to, like, come up with the concept of a sauna? Because it's pretty weird, don't you think? Like, this room that they make really hot with fire or heat and you sit in it. Like, who came up with that concept? 
and that got me thinking even more. I was like, you know, it's pretty hard in it's pretty hard to sit in the sauna for a for a long time. Like it gets pretty hot, gets pretty you know, gets pretty dicey towards the end. And I was like, maybe it was used as a torture technique. And then one day, just say the Romans were torturing these these guys from Finland, and they had them in the the the, the sauna, the torture chamber, and they were just in there. They're like, yeah, these guys are gonna fucking break. These guys, are, these guys are breaking for sure. And they you know, the ancient the ancient Romans are all dressed in their fucking armor with their swords, and they're like, yeah, let's let's leave them in there for a bit. And we'll come back and get them when they're when they're begging for mercy. And they leave for like twenty minutes, and they come back, and these these Finnish dudes are just sitting there, these like kicking back, you know, in their white towels, just chilling. Um, you know, having a laugh. There's one dude who's just butt naked with his with his nuts hanging out. You know, they're they're all sitting around talking shit, sweating up a storm in this in this uh, torture chamber. And then they're like, you know, they're sitting there like, fuck, this is actually pretty good. Maybe we should bring this back back home and um, you know, tell the towns, tell the towns to get around it. And then uh, yeah. The Romans come back, they see them there, and they get really annoyed because the, the, the torture hasn't obviously worked. And then they let them go. Um, yeah, anyway, I was thinking about it, and I was like, that would have been hilarious if that was the way it actually eventuated. But then I did some research, and that's not the case. I, I had the page open, but um, I had to restart my laptop because it was being weird. I had a wig of Sayona. I had a weird experience just before recording this. Um, I, yeah, all my technology was wigging out. I didn't like it at all. I was, where, where is this? Sorry. Two tabs. Here we go. Got it. Um, yeah, so I had a weird experience before doing this. My, all my technology was wigging out. Like my GoPro wouldn't format the, the um little SD card and then my laptop wasn't opening working properly like it wasn't opening garage band that I used to record this podcast wasn't connecting to the internet nothing was working properly I was like what the fuck is going on this is so annoying and then you know my GoPro was freaking out the only thing that wasn't on the fritz was my phone but you know I got there restarted everything and here we are you know recording a podcast for, for my family for my guys Christmas edition podcast with me and my Christmas shirt look at this there's Piccolo, Goku, Vegeta, the boys. Anyway, history of the sauna. Sauna, correctly pronounced so na. So sona. It's sona. 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 Is the only Finnish word in the English dictionary. It means bath and bathhouse. Sauna has been a way of life in Finland uh, where it was invented for over 2,000 years. Every time I think of Finland, all I can think of the Dudesons. All I can think of are the Dudesons. They were the fucking bomb. If you haven't, like, Googled, if you haven't watched videos of the Dudesons, do it. It's fucking hilarious. Um, they're like jackass, but they do wild, wild shit. Like, they once burnt their own house down because they wanted to, because they were cold. So, they decided to light a fire in the living room, and then they burnt their entire house down. Crazy shit. Anyway, um... Bath our sauna. Sauna has been a way of life in Finland where it was invented for over 2,000 years. One of the first written descriptions of the Finnish sauna was in 1,112. The earliest sauna was dug into an embankment in the ground. Later saunas were built above ground with wooden logs. The rocks were heated in a stone stove with a wood fire until the rocks were super hot. The room did not have a chimney but a small air vent at the back wall. The smoke was allowed to fill the room while it was heating. It was a half a day process to heat the room, uh, heat this type of room. When the sauna reached temperature, the bathers entered after the smoke had cleared. The walls, as walls ceiling would become dark black. The original sauna was called Savu, finished for smoke. So, um, Savu sauna. The name sauna, it thought to be derivative of the word savona literally in smoke the sauna later evolved to the more typical metal wood stove heater chimney blah, blah blah so the finnish created the sauna that's pretty cool imagine that like in the old times you are having this you know you got a bunch of i imagine they wouldn't use small rocks they would use big rocks so you got all these big fucking rocks sitting in the middle of this wooden hut that you heated up with um with a fire and then you just dump 
imagine they would have dumped water on the rocks. It'd be pretty fucking gangster. But they reckon nearly everyone in Finland has a sauna in their house, um, which is pretty fucking cool when you think of it. So, yeah. But I like my idea of, you know, these Roman these Roman fucking dudes capture, capturing these Finnish guys and putting them in a sauna or in a in a in a torture torture chamber. Really hot torture chamber and them actually enjoying it. Um yeah. Anyway, so this morning I woke up and my phone was dead flat. I had knocked it. It has it uses one of those magnetic charges and I had knocked it off. Even like before I went to bed, I think, because it was flat yesterday, and I just did, knocked it off before I went to bed, so I didn't charge properly at all last night. And obviously, charge over. So I woke up and I was like, "Ah, oh, shit! Um, what do I do now?" Because you know you need your phone. You need your phone um, these days. So I woke up, charged it for like you know, fifteen minutes while I got ready to go, and then I I left. Um, I was spewing. I wanted to really wanted to listen to a podcast, but you know, couldn't while I was running, Uh, but that led me to think, I was like, because I had to check in when I swam at the gym afterwards with my phone thing, um, and show the, like, the VAX certificate, I was like, well, what are we supposed to do if our phone goes flat, like, what do you do, like, it's a common problem, I presume, like, for me, I didn't expect it to go flat, and it did, and I got there, and I was like, shit, imagine if my phone was completely flat right now, they wouldn't let me in, would they, like, I wouldn't be able to go, Um, they know that, like, they know my certificate now because I've been heaps. But what if you were to go somewhere you'd never been before and your phone was flat and you didn't have the little card on, in your wallet? Like, would you just get kicked out? Would you get knocked back? Like, is there a fucking government database that they can search? I don't know. just got me thinking. I was like, crazy. Because I know you can check in by hand by just writing your name and number and all that kind of crap. But if they need to check your fucking VAX certificate... Now you're going to be able to do it if you don't have your phone. Unless you can log in. Maybe they'll let you use their computer or their computer system or their phone or something to log into your MyGov account. But even then, usually your MyGov is linked to your phone so you can get a number or a text message. Man, they haven't thought this shit through, have they? I reckon so many people are going to get get caught in the dark with this. So make sure you charge your fucking phone. Don't, go, don't let it go flat because you could be left outside in the dark. Hmm. Yeah, wild times, wild times. Do you reckon Santa needs you to be vaccinated? Oh my gosh, what happens if, what happens if Santa only visits the vaccinated? Like, is that is that going to be a thing? Like, what's what's going to happen there? What if Santa, like, oh, not all, not kids didn't get the vaccine, so it didn't doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect them, does it? But Santa's really old. Like, he's an old dude. Shouldn't... What if he gets COVID and fucking kicks the biscuit? I don't know. I don't know, man. I reckon we should all have to show our VAX certificates to Santa Claus. Otherwise, we don't get any presents. Um, because he could die. He's, high, he's in the high-risk category. He's probably really high-risk because he's probably hundreds and hundreds of years old. So he would be really, really high-risk. Good old Santa Claus. Wild. Um... Anyway, on this morning's run, it was like, I don't know, 5.30, 5.45, and I, it was completely light, like completely light out as it is these days, and I was, I didn't expect to see any wombats, because usually you see wombats in, when it's dark, in the morning, when it's dark, you have a little light, and you see them like running along the, the side of the footpath, and they, they fucking disappear into the bushes, or you almost get tripped over by them, um, and this morning, I saw one just, like, coming down towards the, the path that I was running, and he was a big boy. He was a big, chonky, brown boy. And he was, you know, running around, the, running towards the path, and I was like, they actually look like little bears, like little, you know, miniature bears running around, causing trouble. Um, except they don't eat people, they just eat plants. Uh, I saw two of them this morning, which was cool. But, yeah, they look like little bears. Wombats are like little bears. Little ground bears. We've got drop bears that live in the trees here in Australia, and we've got ground bears. Um, But it got me thinking, like, man, fuck. Like, I'm so glad we've only got... Like, I know everyone says Australia has the most deadly animals in the world. But I'm glad we've got the deadly animals that we do have, and not the other ones. I'm so glad we don't have fucking bears, or lions, or tigers... Or mountain lions or wolves. Although wolves would be pretty cool. I'd like a pet wolf. But like, 
we have, you know, venomous snakes. Yeah, great, cool, whatever. Crocodiles, all right, cool, yeah, no worries. Kangaroos are pretty fucked up. Like, they could kill you, but they don't. They choose not to. You know, imagine if we had fucking mountain lions and shit here. That'd be horrible. Imagine going for a run. Be risking it. Risking it for the biscuit every day. Going for a ride, even. Fuck that, dude. Like, oh, no thanks. And bears. Imagine if there were brown bears just living in fucking Telangi Forest. Shit would be fucked up. You go for a ride up King Lake and then you're climbing a hill and the bear starts chasing you. What are you fucking supposed to do? Dead. Fuck that. No chance. Um, so we're lucky. We're, we're lucky we've only got the animals we do have here. We don't have any fucking crazy ones. Like they do in the other parts of the world, mainly, namely, America. Oh, it'd be a disaster going out and just getting your training done. Fucking hell. We'd probably all, that would probably have, like, it would probably be legal to carry guns or of some sort, um, if that was the case, because you'd need something to protect yourself against fucking wild animals. Like, a bear wouldn't give a shit. It'd be like, oh, bro, I'm vegan. It's fine. Dead. It'd be like, I'm not. Yum. Delicious. Anyway. Yeah, so be grateful we don't have any fucking crazy animals like they do over there. Not happening here today, sir. Um, anyway, the topic of today, I'm going to do a little year in review. The year in review, I reckon, me thinks. Um, because, you know, it's been a big year. I've done, what, 26, this will be 26 episodes. What's 26 times 2? 52. That's half a year in episodes. <laughs> You hear that? Sounds good. Did I get my math right? I have my, my trusty Texas Instruments calculator. Nice. I fluked it. I'm not, not you know, I'm all right in math, but not really that good. Um, so, half a year of episodes, pretty good. Pretty happy with that. I'm going to drink this kombucha to celebrate. Hopefully blocking my swallowing from the microphone. Um... Anyway, year in review. So I'm going to go back and I suggest that you guys do this as well. Do it with me. Work through my thought process. I'm going to ask some questions at the end, but I'm going to go through, you know, a little summary of my year um, and do the same. Go through it in your head and be like, oh, what did I do this year? Whether it's during this episode or afterwards, you know, run through your year and just, you know, mentally map out some things for yourself. So for me, the first notable thing that I did this year was I remember hitting the two times you um, triathlons and I hit some solid PBs on the runs, I think. That, that was some good races. I remember it was I was itching because I'd spent the whole of 2020 training um, at like just doing training, no events, nothing because we were locked down for so long. And then I remember coming out and I had Geelong, the Geelong Half Ironman again and I remember just like itching, itching to race, itching to do things. So I did two Olympic, um, two times you race, two Olympic distance, two times you races. And the first one, I had a good crack. I had a pretty good crack, did a, did a half decent time. I'll actually try and find the times so I can um, say what they are. But I had a pretty good time. And then the second one, I remember like, I still had something, I had still had some in the tank after the first one. So for the second one, I just let absolute, let loose and just went for it. So the first one, did I put my time? I better, I better if I can put my time. Oh, I didn't put my overall time. What a pain in the ass. So my swim for the first one was 23 minutes, 35 seconds. Ride was an hour and seven. And run was 45 minutes. Now, that was pretty good. I'm happy with that. That was my first race in a long time. The second one, did I write? Yeah, okay. So the second one, I didn't get a swim because it was the water quality was shit. So I had to run, ride, run. So my, it was a 4K run, and I ran it in 17.13, which was 4.11 pace. That was fucking quick for me. I've never run something that fast before. Um, then it was a 40K ride, which I did in an hour and seven minutes again. So the same, basically. And then 10K run, I did it in 41 minutes, which was all-time PB for me. So fucking pumped with that. Um, so it was flying after those races. And then I built into... Geelong after that it was a bit of a headache because Geelong got it was meant to be in Feb then it got pushed to like the end of March I think I might have even been the start of April actually I had a post so I can check when that was April 2nd so I think it was the very end of March 
um, that it actually got pushed to, so it got pushed a month, which meant, you know, I was peaking for Geelong, I was able to peak, if Geelong was in Feb, I would have peaked for Geelong, had a fucking real, real full-on hit out, and then I would have started, I would have had like a week dip, and then I would have started to build for Ironman in June, but um, unfortunately Geelong got pushed, so that meant that I took my taper as I would, and then Ironman training started, so I wasn't peaking for half 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 Ironman distance. It was you know training was focused on full, so I didn't really get to give it everything. I didn't like I didn't get to hit it as hard as I would have liked, um, but still had a good crack. I still hit a PB by quite a bit. I think it was like thirty minutes or something. I did it in four fifty three, I think. So I don't know what my breakdown. I can't remember what my breakdown was. I remember doing a split post to cover everything, but I don't remember exactly what my um, my breakdown for it was. Anyway, but it was, I remember having a really good race. I think my swim was, they were out, they fucked it up, fucked up my timing chip. I think my swim was about 28 minutes. And then the ride would have been, it was two hours 40, I think, 250 maybe. And then the run, oh, well, I want to find out what my run was because my run, was good i had a good run oh man i'm not gonna find it yeah i'm not gonna find it so don't worry i'm not gonna bother um yeah my run was good i had a good run i think and i just remember crossing the line and like almost blacked out like i did the year before which was fun but that was a good I remember that was a good race and then it like gave me gave me a bit of confidence before building for cans and then you know once i finished along i had a i think a, a, i didn't really have much time off i didn't really have i think i had may have had a month of training that was like pretty chill not chill but wasn't as bad as it was going to be and then six weeks i think it was probably eight weeks out before um cans that's when we started the build because then you had two weeks of a taper and then it was like go time and that six-week block was probably the hardest block of training I've ever done in my entire life, just time-wise. It was insane. Like, I just remember doing, well, it was eight hours, eight hours easy every Saturday, um, six riding and, like, to nearly two running every Saturday. And then Sundays were, like, 28, 30, 32K runs um, every Sunday. So, like, you would have to back up an eight-hour training day with another three two and a half three hour run they were rough and then during the week it wasn't much better i was swimming i think 12 12 to 14 k's every week in the pool while running i don't know i think i was running like 70 80 90 k's a week and then riding was you know up above 350 something like that three maybe even more it was just hectic it was hectic i didn't have any time for strength training um and it was just all the time go 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 i was very tired but by the end of that six week block i was like how the fuck is how am i supposed to race which is exactly how you're supposed to feel you're supposed to be just absolutely flattened because you've got two weeks to taper and get better you've got two weeks as like a bit of a deload before like to adapt to the fitness that you've just fucking smashed and get a bit of recovery back in before you hit the big one and then so obviously that brings me to the biggest event or the biggest accomplishment of my year was ticking off the Ironman, finally, finally did it, finally ticked off the big, the big one that I've been training for for a while, um, I'm fucking pumped with it, like, you know, it's probably one of my biggest accomplishments, and, um, I can't wait to go back and do another one, I don't know when that will be, but I would like to go back and do another one and do a better time, I'd like to go sub 10, like I said, um, which I think I can do, I just gotta, you know, train diligently and focus, but at the moment, yeah, I'm not going to, definitely not doing one next year, no way, like next year after I do Geelong, I think I'm going to take a bit of a bit of time off from tri training because I just want a bit of time back in my life, I want to do a bit more strength training, I want to do different things, like I still want to ride and still want to run, I still want to swim, but you know, I, I want to do it on my terms, I don't want to be, you know, having to do two th- two sessions every day, like that's, that's killing me at the moment, I want to just, you know, maybe train in the morning and then do whatever, so um, yeah, I'm going to I'll focus, I'm going to figure all that shit out next year, but for now, I need to hit Geelong, and I need to get a good fucking time, so, yeah, after I fucking ticked off Cairns Ironman, that was, I was pretty pumped with that, especially with the COVID breakout that happened just before, I only just managed to get away and do it, um, which was, yeah, very lucky, very, very lucky with that one, but we got there, we did it, 
Um, and then was lucky enough afterwards to go and have a little holiday with Caitlin in Byron Bay afterwards, which was really nice. I think we spent five or six days there. It was super chill. Um, I would love to go back and be, you know, relaxed because I, I had a bit of stressful, had some stress going on um, while we were there that was kind of annoying me. I'd love to go back and just chill out for maybe like fucking 10 days or something and just chill the fuck out and just really soak it in because I didn't really get the chance, unfortunately, to do that. Like I enjoyed it, but I could have enjoyed it more. Um, and then, you know, once we got back from that, the shit kind of hit the fan at home and at work and all that kind of thing. And then that led to, as you guys are probably aware, all the things I've been speaking vaguely about over the past couple of months. Um, which has led me to near here, being, you know, where I am now, realizing that I can't feel things, um, can't feel things properly, which is a bummer, man, I was talking about it with my psychologist the other day, about finishing my Ironman, and I was like, fuck, it would have been nice to actually feel, be able to feel it, be able to feel the fucking, you know, overwhelming joy of finishing that event, instead of, you know, just cross the line about what's next, um, but, you know, we're going to work on that, so that next time I do it, I'll be able to feel it and enjoy it. But yeah, so it's kind of been like everything's been kind of a bit of a blur since like August. Um, I don't really know what's happened, what you know, what's going on. But we're here now. Christmas is right around the corner. Um, it's been a pretty fucking crazy year. Learned some things. Learned some things. You know, did some things. Yeah, crazy. So how's your year been? Have you you know done some cool things or you had a bit of a break? break from pushing the parcel too hard you know all that all that jizz jazz um yeah been a pretty crazy year anyway so I'm, i've written down some questions and oh geez what have i done um command shift three is take a screenshot on mac if anyone's wondering i yeah wrote down some questions i don't know how these are going to go but you know i figured i was like ah i like this structure of asking myself questions because when you ask yourself questions you give answers instead of just rambling about a bunch of shit. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to answer, ask these questions. And I'm going to give myself, I'm going to give answers. So the first one, obvious question. What am I most proud of this year? So what am I most proud of this year? Ask yourself these questions too. Now for me, I think it's, I'd, I'd, I'd be silly if I didn't say Iron Man. Um, I'm definitely most proud of my Iron Man. Like a lot of hard work went into that, a lot of time, a lot of, a lot of fucking stress, a lot of everything went into that. And like it was obviously a goal of mine for it's been a goal of mine for the last couple of years, so ticking that off and getting a good time was number one. Like I didn't know what I was, I didn't know what I was capable of. I didn't know if I could do it or not. Didn't know this that. Didn't have any gauge on it at all because I'd never done something that long before, and like I had no idea of the you know the impacts of it. I did not know what was going to happen. And I'm just so happy that I managed to tick that off and, you know, get that get that done, get that in the bag. Because it was a pretty big, um, yeah, pretty big achievement. And I'm, like, annoyed that I didn't go sub 11 hours. But you know what? We'll go back and we'll do that next time. I'm just, I'm really happy I did it. And to get a, get a taste taste of it, to see what it was really like to do something that, that big and really push myself. Because, like, that, I did. I not, it's not the event that's the hard part with those things. It's a training because you can't miss, you can't, you have to do it in the training, if you don't do the training, then you're never going to finish the actual event, like, it's, the training is the fucking, the hard part, um, so, like, for me, it was just real, I'm really proud of myself that I stuck to it and did it, even though, you know, it was hard, I struggled, I still managed to push through it and do it and, you know, tick all the boxes that I needed to tick to get myself to the point, to the position that I got myself to, so, really, really, really proud of that, um, and then, you know, next question after that is, flows on, is what did I learn? Um, this year, I learned, you know, learned some pretty big lessons. The first one, obviously, is Ironman are hard. They're very hard, <laughs> very difficult. You need to train and you need to just ride the fucking roller coaster because there are going to be good times and they're going to be bad times. It's like a long distance run. You're going to be feeling great and then you're going to feel shit, but then you'll feel good again and then you'll feel shit and then you'll feel, you know, all right and then you'll feel shit. Like you're going to you're gonna ride this roller coaster the entire race, except for the swim. The swim will be all right because it's pretty short, like an hour, and then everything else is a roller coaster and a half. Um, 
So, yeah, Iron Men are hard, very hard. Don't underestimate them. Then I uh, also learned that I can't feel feelings, which is a recent discovery, but you know what? We're going to fix that and we're going we're gonna, to um, improve and you guys will be along with me for the ride. Then I also learned that I still have issues with training as a coping mechanism, which is something I want to address next year. Once I get Geelong out of the way, then I can actually focus on addressing that. And I just want to get back to training or see, I want to be able to train for fun because I enjoy it. I do enjoy training. I enjoy riding workouts. I enjoy doing stuff. I enjoy getting out there, getting active. And it's, it's a good feeling. I love it. But I need to learn how to do it right like for the right reasons and not as a coping mechanism to try and hide from um hide from things and at the moment you know life's pretty crazy and it is a bit of a coping mechanism it's a good one but it's still a coping mechanism so i need to address that and kind of like you know figure out how to get back to enjoying training just for the enjoyment and not put too much on it and i want to train less like i want to like i was speaking to nicola uh on saturday or sunday was Sunday and I was just saying that you know I'm finding it really hard at the moment like really hard to focus on training I'm really really difficult to you know I just like I'm finding myself dreading it because it's just such a fucking huge chunk of time out of my life at the moment and I don't want to spend you know I don't want to spend fucking every I don't want to spend hours I don't want to spend two hours a day on average training um, I would like to have a bit of life back. Like, it's not a big chunk, no, but I can do less. So, I think next year... I'm sorry, the point of that, me telling you that was she was saying, like, she she said that, you know, it's everyone struggles with this. And she's like, what you've got to learn is that when you have downtime after a race, you really need to just do nothing or, like, do the things you want to do. So, like, miss sessions, don't train, like, don't push yourself to train hard in those times where it's not necessary and save that for when it is necessary and i look back at after my cans iron man what i probably should have done was just you know fuck around and do nothing for you know a month even longer not not bother about training not bother about doing this and that and just take the time off give myself a you know mental break um and i think after I do Geelong, I'm going to do that. I'm going to take some time off and just fucking relax and not worry about it because I want to do these. I want to do triathlons forever. Like I want to do them for the rest of my life. They're fun. They're so much fun. I fucking love them. So I need to get myself in a good rhythm or a good habit to be able to do them forever um, and not actually not like end up burnt out like I'm feeling at the moment because I feel, I feel proper burnt out of this, like, it's hard balancing three disciplines, it's a lot of fucking work, like, I don't know if any of you guys listening to this um, have done or do it, but it's, it's hard, it's fucking hard work, and if you do it all year round, rough, and I've been doing it for a long time, so I need to, you know, reset myself, and then come into it with the right attitude of, you know, maybe build up for a couple of races and then just switch off for a bit and then you know i need to get used to that feeling of you know being okay with losing my fitness and then building it back up because you can't be you know at your peak fitness all the time it's just not possible so i need to get used to that right in that wave of you know what fitness is not as good as it should be but i'll build back up to get it to where it should be and obviously with that that gives me more of a chance to do more strength stuff more of the stuff that i fucking love in the gym like hit some heavy weights and do that kind of stuff gives me a <clears throat> gives me a chance to do more of that and more sprint stuff too i miss doing like fucking minute long workouts that suck I haven't done one of them in ages i haven't done some proper fucking ski intervals or like air bike intervals in such a long time so I want to get back to doing them. Like I want to get back to doing some Thursday thrashes with my boy. I need to, I miss all that stuff. So, you know, hopefully, um, after I take Geelong off, hopefully, <laughs> I'm saying all this now, but you know what's going to happen? I'll do it and then I'll be fucking pumped. I'll be so pumped that I'll sign up for another race. I might probably end up doing Shepherd and I don't know. Hopefully not, but we'll see. Anyway, I need to learn to, you know, ride the, ride the wave of competing better competing better so that i can you know fill the cup back up um now next question is so i'll go negative then positive what were some low lights obviously i can't really talk about this hey low lights were this stuff that's kind of happened recently it's a bit of a bummer it's put me in a position that i don't really want to be in 
Um, no one does, but you know what? You have to just fucking deal with it. That's life. You got to overcome it and move on. Overcome it, power forward, move on, um, and just take it. Learn some lessons from it. Like I've learned plenty from this, and just you know, fucking take it in your stride and use it to improve yourself and use it to prevent stuff like this from happening in the future. So that's all I can do. Um, I think there are birds in the gutters. That's all I can do is take it in my stride, learn from it and, you know, push forward. But it's like one day I'll talk about it. That's why I'm taking my psychology diary so I can go through and fucking tell everyone everything. I might even write, I should write a fucking book. That'd be great. Um, yeah that way i can you know go through it and explain everything to everyone what happened this and that and then hopefully shed some light on on it but for now it's been a fucking massive it's probably been the biggest low of the year um it was pretty in a pretty dark pretty dark and gloomy place back in august july august yeah pretty fucking shit place so you know feeling better now feeling much better in a much better headspace i'm lucky i got my training grateful i've got caitlin grateful i've got a lot like grateful i've got the family that i've got grateful i've got a lot of things in my life um that have been there for me like friends so much it's just i'm grateful for a lot of things anyway what are some highlights obviously the one of the biggest highlights would be my fucking um car i'm so happy with that that's cool i love my car it's a fucking bomb um it is the bomb. The other biggest highlight would probably probably, blah, 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 probably be the time I get to spend with my lovely girlfriend Caitlin. That's so much fun. Um, we've got we're going through we've got albums on our phones of each other saved, and I like I put up a I think I put up a little a reel of some of the stuff that we some of the stuff we fuck around with on our anniversary together because we've been two years. Well, now it's two years and a couple of months. Um, so, oh, two years and three months, two months now. Um, yeah, put up a little video of some of the stuff. We have, like, folders, yeah, on our phones of the stupid shit we get up to together. And it's so funny. Oh, my gosh. Some of the videos are hilarious. I love it. It's the best. Um, so, definitely a highlight of my year was just spending time with her and getting, like, more and more fucking good memories crammed in my brain. Um I actually got it. I'm spewing. I didn't video this, man. Oh, what does fucking spew? What a fucking spew. I didn't video it. Um, but I don't know if any of you guys have had Kinotto before, but it's like an Italian drink. It looks like Coca-Cola. It's like brown, but it's so bitter. And like, you can get some that are a bit sweeter and a bit nicer than others. And then others, like some just fucking bitter and disgusting. And it tastes like someone's put chemicals in the water. Or it's like, it tastes like someone's put chemicals into Coke. It's fucked. Anyway, on I bought some because I was like, I, I miss having it. I used to have it as a kid and I used to love it. So I bought some and I had it and it was the real bitter one. So I poured it in a glass and I was drinking it. And then I like poured, you know, topped my glass off. And I was like, it looks a bit like Coke. And I was like, hmm, I got an idea. So I went down. Caitlin was downstairs doing her makeup. I put it in a glass and I went down there just to, you know, see what she what she was doing and then she's like oh is that coke can i can i have some and i was like yeah cool and just put it down and like walked out and then like turned around and watched her have a sip and she had a sip and she was like what is in that what what did you do what did what did you do and she's freaking out it was so funny she like it she was freaking out for like it's probably five ten minutes it was hilarious oh no my mic my, i'm still recording is this, yeah, it's still working, my headphones ripped out, um, yeah, she was freaking out, it was hilarious to watch, because she didn't know what was going on, she thought I'd done something, she thought I'd, like, fucking poisoned it, um, so, yeah, that was hilarious, I wish I videoed it, I fucking wish I did, I'll never get her again, she was, she was like, I thought you had coke, I thought you had, you know, a glass of coke, coke zero or coke, and you fucking give me this shit, what the fuck, she didn't say any of that, but, you know, that's how it felt, um, yeah, it was hilarious. I should have videoed it. The facial expression expressions were priceless. And then after, oh yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get her again because she won't trust me. Um, after that one, she's like, "You never, you never drink Coke out of a glass. You always drink it out of a can." And then this one time, you happen to have it in a glass, and then it's fucking. And I was like, "Yeah, fuck, I should have videoed it." Anyway, um, reminds me of something else hilarious. Oh, this is probably another highlight. Is my, my fucking dogs. Axel and Hudson. 
um, my boys, they've been a massive highlight. They've been so helpful the last few months. Like they just bring joy and innocence into our lives. It's the best. Without them, I don't know, it would be pretty fucking gloomy. Um, so I'm so grateful that they that they are a part of my life and our life. So it's awesome. I actually put my sunglasses that I use, my cycling sunglasses on Axel, the puppy, yesterday. And he, like, I put them on him and I was like, oh, and then he ran off straight away. Didn't take the sunglasses off. Didn't shake him to get them off his head. He just took off and just disappeared. And I was like, can you fucking, I was like, Ugh. so I had to chase him and try and get him back. He didn't shake him off. He just ran off with them. It was hilarious. It was like he put them on and he was like, whoa, prism lenses and just took off. Fuck, I need to get that on video too. See, not having your phone around sometimes is, you know, negative. Because you want to get shit on video so you can show other people. Um, anyway, last question I had for myself was, what are you excited for next year? <sighs> I'm excited for the whole... I'm just excited for next year as a whole. Because I'm at a point in my life that's like, yeah, it's, you know, it's daunting. It's a bit scary. I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't have anything... Um, I don't really have any direction at the moment. It's whack. I don't know. I'll actually talk about this in a second. What I was speaking about this with honor, but I don't have any direction. I don't have, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where to go. So it's like, I'm excited for the prospect of next year. Cause it's like, cool. I am going to go down a different path, a new path, a new journey. I get to experience new things. So it's exciting the year as a whole, because I don't know what it holds for me. Usually it's like, yep, it's going to be the same as last year or same as this year, same shit. But next year, you know, hopefully we don't have to fucking deal with this pandemic shit anymore. You know, I just start fresh. I don't know where I'm going to go, what's going to happen. It's going to be, it's going to be interesting. So, and you guys will be along with me for the ride because I plan on, you know, keeping effort into this podcast because it's something I enjoy. And like I said, I'm going to get this soundboard set up. I started Googling shit. So this soundboard's going to be, be set up and be playing sounds during the podcast, which would be fucking sick. Um... Yeah, anyway, what I was talking about is lack of direction. And this is like my psychologist had a bit of a bit of advice for me. She was like, you you can't focus on that at the moment. You just got to focus on the mindset that you want to be in. Um, and, you know, I want to be enjoying my job. I want to wake up every day excited to go to work. And I want to, you know, work hard. I want to enjoy it. And then I want to come home to, you know, Caitlin. I want to have a fucking puppy. I want to be in, in our house and I want to enjoy it. And that's my mindset. That's what I, that's the feeling I'm chasing. That's the feeling I want to get to. And she's like, if you keep that in the forefront of your mind, that feeling, that, you know, situation you want to be in, then you will subconsciously make all the right decisions to get to that position. So... I'm going to try it. Like, I've got nothing to lose. I may as well keep that feeling at the forefront of my mind. That, that that you know, that I'm going to chase that response. I want to chase that feeling, as they say. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to give it a shot and see what, see what pans out. Um, but, yeah, like, I hope you guys answer those questions as well for yourself. Um, I'm sure some of you have some pretty exciting shit that happened this year. Um, and then I'm sure some of you also had some low lights. But, you know... It's, it's part of life, hey, that's what we do, it's ups and downs, ups and downs, um, but you keep on kicking, you keep on trucking, get to the next one, get to the next the next day, the next year, you keep on fucking moving forward, um, yeah, anyway, I had some other, that's right, I've been meaning to do this all year, I ripped this one off from Bert Kreischer, yeah. Bert Kreischer, old birdie boy, um, whew. And it's called open tabs. And what you do is you go through your open tabs. And I haven't been shutting tabs for a long time um, on my phone because I'm like, you know what? Cool. I'm going to do this one day. And, you know, here we are. So, um, the first, so the first one, obviously, is my podcast analytics. I always have that open because I like seeing how my podcast does. Then the next one is basically the question of what is the difference? And I'm sure a lot of you have realized or wondered this yourselves. Um, what is the difference between a pound and a quid? And the answer, I can't remember if I've said this already on this podcast. I'm going to sh- close this once I do this so that I don't ever repeat myself. But basically, pound is the currency of Britain and other European countries. Quid, on the other hand, is just the slang term for pound. So quid is a pound. Um, 
Next up, I have oh, vegan chocolate crackles. These are, I'm going to keep these because I want to make these. Um, yeah, vegan chocolate crackles, delicious. Then I've got my vegan lentil dal recipe that I always use. Then I googled what does IRL mean because I had no idea that it means in real life. Um, I still have to see it so many times and I'm like, what the fuck does IRL mean? And I always forget, but now I know. Then what else did I Google? Oh, vegan diet plan for rheumatoid arthritis. So there was, I Googled that because I, when I had my bloods done, my doctor was like, yeah, you've got some markers that could lead to rheumatoid, rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis. And I was like, fuck, I could see myself getting that because it's just the way my hands react in the cold. So I started Googling um, what are good ways to treat it. And thankfully, the vegan diet is a generally a low inflammation diet. So that's one massive way. And I think vitamin D helps heaps. So I've been smashing a vitamin D supplement. Um, next one is how to watch Alien vs. Predator in order. So Caitlin and I earlier this year watched all of them. Um, and they were really good. We watched all start to finish, like even the early ones. Even the early ones are really, really interesting. Really good, like there. You can tell it's a bit fucking sketch because they're old, but like it's a good storyline. So if you want, if you want something to watch that gives you a, quite a few movies, I would suggest watching Alien vs Predator. So, but watch them in order. It's hard. So we watched it in, um, like chronological order so we watched prometheus which came out in 2012 alien covenant which came out in 2017 then we watched alien which was 1979 aliens which was 1986 alien 3 92 and then alien resurrection 97 resurrection was a bit fucked but the rest were pretty good then we watched predator in order it was predator 1987 then it was predator 2 1990 then it was predator the predator in 2018 then it was predators in 2010 and they were pretty good movies. Very happy with them. Um, and then Alien... Oh, I can't remember the 2010 one. Not just like Alien franchise, but it's happened that. Isn't there? Yeah, I don't know. I can't remember that one. But then we watched Alien vs. Predator, which is AVP, Alien vs. Predator, 2004. And then AVP, Alien vs. Predator, Relinquium, 2007. They were both... They were all fucking great movies. So I suggest you watch it. Um, then there's just a bunch of car shit that I've Googled that I'm going to exit because it's not really interesting. Uh, What's this? One of the fucking prank drinks. Let's let this load and see what the fuck these are. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, exit that. Um, I don't need that anymore. Sorry. Chewy, chewy vegan tahini chocolate chip cookies delicious i might make them again too um here we go what are the causes of the soleus strain that was when i strained my soleus i'm sorry if this is a bit boring whoa define nomenclature what the fuck is this the devising choosing of names of things especially in the science or other discipline discipline the body system of names used in a particular field. Now, nomenclatures. The students found it hard to decipher the nomenclature of chemical compounds. Pfft, I don't know why the fuck I googled that. That's weird. Um, yeah, which way? So, which? this is actually an interesting one, right? Which way does the windshield shade face? Do you put shiny side out or shiny side in? I go shiny side out because I'm like, we've got to reflect the sun. But Caitlin says it's shiny side in, which kind of makes sense because I got a Dragon Ball one and the picture, I face the picture inside and she's like, why would you face the picture inside? The picture's supposed to be outside. And I was like, maybe she's right. So I don't know. If you fucking know the answer, please tell me. I Googled it and it didn't answer me at all. Um, how tall is Matthew Delavadova? Because I did that ad with him. YMH Studios, that's crazy, another YMH Studios, oh yeah, I've decided, no, that's for next year, I'll save that, I googled my name, and that makes, yeah, fuck, sorry, I've got all these, two times you, what's this one, what happened, what happened to Tracy Morgan, I googled this, Tra apparently Tracy's Morgan, Tracy Morgan's fucking um, limo got smashed into by a truck, anyway, did I Google it again? No, Google another one. All right, this is getting 
ridiculous now. I apologize. Oh, yeah. What is... What does anti... What is an anti-Semite? And it is basically someone who is prejudiced against Jewish people, which is fucked. Uh, uh, I watched, we watched Elf the other day, and I had to Google whether a, a nor, Norwal, Norwal, the, the whale with the giant point, was real. And they are real. They actually exist. Crazy. Um, ooh. Okay, I don't want to watch that. My events, don't know what that is. Run a rack. Run a rack. What words? Plan, planitude. Interesting. Um, pressure. I'm going to see if there's anything interesting before I, I do this. Oh, what's this? Creamy vegetable. Oh, risotto. I made risotto the other day for the first time ever. Wing the shit out of it and it actually worked, which is cool. All right, there's a bunch of shit that I'm just going to exit now because none of it's. Um, none of it's relevant, except for that ad blue. So, all right, this is in, this is actually interesting. I apologize for the last like five minutes; it was pretty boring. But this is interesting. So, if if you guys uh, are around the car scene, you'll know that um, there's an ad blue shortage, right? And ad blue, you add it's some it's another it's a thing you add to your car, uh, namely a diesel car, and what it does is it essentially like helps dilute the exhaust and i've got a little diagram here that i'll I'll read out but what it does is so your diesel engine produces exhaust right and then the ad blue mixes with the exhaust and what it does is it um makes it so that all that gets put out is nitrogen and water as opposed to nitrogen oxide and ammonia so it's i don't know what chemical it is but it mixes with your exhaust fumes and puts out harmless nitrogen and water as opposed to exhaust fumes but there's a massive shortage of ad blue like i think due to the the, um, supply chain issue in china and getting it over here in australia um so we are running low so if your car has ad blue then you might be in a bit of strife um thankfully mine doesn't but yeah you might be in a bit of strife um yeah crazy shit anyway um that open tabs i probably should just google some pretty cool shit that way i've got some cool stuff to um to bring up when i do that again anyway um that is enough from me enough rambling for today i hope you guys enjoy this episode i'm a big fan of reflecting at this time of year looking back on the year that you've had because whether it's good or bad, like you're always, you're always able to pull positive stuff out of it. Whether it's been a completely fucked negative year, you're still able to pull out lessons you learn um, from the year. So like regardless of how it went, you're, you're still able to actually benefit from it. That's why I like reflecting on things like this. So I suggest you do the same. Um, yeah, anyway, happy fucking Merry Christmas. Have, have a good New Year. I'll... Um, I'll do one of these episodes. Fuck, who knows? I may do one earlier, but at the moment I'm planning off two. I'm planning on two weeks. Two weeks off. Um, yeah, Merry Christmas. I hope you guys got you know all the best gifts you could have gotten. Um, oh, I can. Can I say? No, I'm not going to say anything. Um, yeah, hope you guys get some fucking you know killer presents and everyone is present. Um, yeah, it's a good time of year. Good time of year just to fucking enjoy it. Hey, eh? enjoy all the Christmas food you want. Don't fucking put pressure on it. Like, it's just, it's one of those things. I never, you know, I would always put so much pressure on it, but now I've shifted my mindset. I get to enjoy it. It's great. I have a 21K run Christmas Day, and then I'm going to follow that up with 21 kilometers of food. So very, very excited for that. Um, yeah, I'm going to make, we're going to make gingerbread houses too this week, me and Caitlin. So I'm very excited for that. I'll put up a picture to show you guys. I'm going to make a better one than her. Um, and I'm sure you'll all agree. <sighs> Hopefully. But we'll see. Anyway, have a fucking ripper, ripper Christmas, guys. And a happy new year. I'll um, talk to you in 2022, boy. Fuck yeah. Nice.